here today to walk you through a very, well, two really simple recipes that can be made from your pantry. And um, I'm here to answer all of your pantry cooking questions. So I am just gonna walk around from my phone and back into my kitchen and I will be with you in just a second. Okay, here I am. Hello everyone, I'm so happy to be with the Chalkboard Magazine today. Again, I am Ilana Horwich. I am a teacher of intuitive cooking, which means I empower people to be able to cook without recipes. And we are now in a situation that gives us an opportunity to really grow that muscle so that we can cook with what we have in the house. For those of you that are already just looking at my ingredients and saying, oh my God, I don't have that. Don't worry, I'm gonna show you and talk to you about what to use with what you do have in the house. Now, let me just tell you how this is going to run. We are live, which means I get to answer questions from you live. So if you have any questions while you're watching about what I'm doing right now, or about a particular ingredient you have in your pantry that you don't know what to do with, or some other cooking question that is pertaining to this general subject, go ahead and type it in, and I will be checking my computer, which is right next to me, every once in a while when we have a pause, and I will answer those questions, okay? I love to have um, feedback. I love to be interactive with you guys, so please don't hesitate to answer, ask me questions. It's really what I love to do. So, first things first, um, we are going to be making what I call yummy, gorgeous grains, okay? So we're gonna use the grains that we have in our pantry. And I'm gonna be admit something to you guys. I have less grains in my pantry than I normally do. I, I thought my pantry was full of them and I didn't go buy more and so I have a little bit less. And you may have more than I do and all of that is good. Mine is still gonna be delicious. Yours is still gonna be delicious, so it's just letting us know, like, let's not stress what we don't have, let's use what we do have. So when I'm talking about gorgeous grains, my, I love quinoa, I subside on quinoa. Um, we're also, you may have brown rice, or white rice, or black rice. You may have some barley. Um, also, I'm going to be using lentils. You may have brown lentils like this, or you may have some red lentils, which would be awesome too. You may have some split green peas or split yellow peas. All of that is going to be wonderful. Um, this is also quinoa, just the multicolored kind. And since I am a little low on grains in my pantry, I thought I would add some seeds into my grains mix. So you can add some pumpkin seeds or sunflower seeds, whatever you have, all right? We are also going to be making a tahini lemon cream. So I thought it was probably possible that a lot of you have tahini in the house and maybe don't even know what to do with it. Sometimes my tahini can sit in my fridge for a while before I pick it up and use it. And it's also very possible that you have lemons. So if you have some tahini and you have lemons and you have some olive oil and salt, you can have make a tahini lemon cream. Um, so let's talk about the first thing that we are going to do is why do I call these yummy gorgeous grains? Well, I always start by putting my grains in a glass and I make, you know, when you're kids and you go to those like art fairs and they, you like fill up the, they give you like a glass sculpture and you fill it up with all those different colored sands, you know, and it's like, you're so excited. There's like pink sand and blue sand. Well, that's essentially what we're doing, except for we're gonna be using grains. So imagine like, this is the quinoa. You might add rice and barley. I'm out of those, so what am I gonna do? I'm gonna add more quinoa, okay? So that's sort of the amount of maybe grains you wanna use. You can decide, like don't, you know, just have fun with what you put in, the amounts, no need to measure. And then I'm gonna add some lentils. Again, if you have green lentils or red lentils or green peas, add that in, okay? And then to top it off, I will be adding some pumpkin seeds. Again, if you, you can add some sunflower seeds or anything else you may have in the house. 
in this general arena. Okay, so now look. Isn't that gorgeous? It's so pretty. That's why they're called yummy, gorgeous grains. You're going to cook this. Well, I just cooked mine in my rice maker, okay? I'm gonna to talk to you guys that don't have a rice maker, but I'm gonna assume that a lot of you may, and a rice cooker is very helpful in this time. I always have my cooking students get a rice maker. I think it's really helpful. Um, you are gonna put these in your rice maker, and then you're just gonna put two parts water. So one part gorgeous grains, two parts water. So if you're using a glass that is this size, this is nutritional yeast, we'll talk about it later, um, and you fill your grains up to here, then you can use two amounts of water. So you don't worry about your measuring cups, it's just two for two. I mean, two for one. <clears throat> if you don't have a rice cooker at home, what are you going to do? You are gonna put your grains in a pot, you are gonna put double the amount of water, you are going to bring it to a boil, and then you are gonna cover it and bring it to a simmer and then cook it until it's done, okay? So that is how that is going to work. Now, <laughs> my favorite part is that we are going to dress the grains. So it's not so much about exactly what you have in the house, it's more like the process of making these grains. The number one trick I think, well I know actually, is dressing your grains when they're hot. So let me just show you what mine look like. You see that? So that cup, that cup of grains that I just showed you make quite a lot. I mean, this is like easily four servings. So um, you can, you know, make more, use what you need in the house. So what you have, what you, however many people you are feeding. Okay, we're going to dress it while it's warm. That's what's gonna give it so much good flavor. The first thing that is going into our grains is olive oil, and we're gonna use extra virgin olive oil. I'm assuming you have that at home. That is, a, that is a staple for sure. And you are gonna see that I'm using a lot of olive oil. And those of you that already know me know that I love olive oil, but olive oil is the flavor, it is the life force of flavor. I lived in Italy for five years, even though what I'm teaching you now is healthy California food, I'm a native Californian, my principles of cooking come from Italy. So we're gonna be using a lot of olive oil. I know some of you are freaking out. Trust me, it's good. You want olive oil. Plus, this is like a vegetarian meal right now, so it's good to have some healthy fats in there. And then you are just going to, you know, stir that in. Woo, yum, delicious. Smells good in here. Next thing that we are going to add is salt. So I always use a salt jar. I always encourage people to use their fingers. Um, salt is antibacterial. I'm assuming you're clean inside your own house, so go ahead and use, use your fingers in the salt and add a little bit of, or a little bit or a medium amount of salt in there. We're gonna finish adding the saltiness to these grains by actually adding umami saltiness. So these are my three, like my trifecta of umami ingredients. And I know at the chalkboard mag, probably these ingredients are not new to you. Um, I would imagine most of you have tamari, uh, which is like a wheat-free soy sauce. So if you don't have tamari, you probably have soy sauce in the house. This is Bragg's amino acids, also adds umami. It's like a saltiness, sweet flavor. And these are coconut aminos. So these are like proteins, sweet, salty proteins. If you do not have, <clears throat> excuse me, coconut aminos or, or Bragg's, just use tamari. And if you don't have any of these, that's okay too. You're gonna need more salt though. So I always go ahead and add, the, add them by pouring into the cap so I can kind of measure a little bit. I'm not measuring amounts, I'm just, so I don't you know, pour in too much at a time. It's just like more control. So I'm adding a little bit of tamari. Um, I actually think I can use a little bit more. I've made these a, a, a lot of times. Um, some coconut aminos right into the cap. and some brags, which doesn't have a cap, so we're just gonna add a little bit in. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is mix it up. Let me show you what's going on in here. Mm, it smells really, really good. Okay, and we are going to taste.
guess what? It's delicious. <laughs> okay, there we go. Our yummy, gorgeous greens for the moment are complete. I am gonna look and see if anybody has asked me any questions um, that I can answer up until now. Um, Plant-centered healing. I said, like, thank you for this live series. You are more than welcome, plant-centered healing. I'm enjoying this. Oh, someone is saying, why are you so cute? You go, girl. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. You know, when I'm out here, I feel like I'm talking to a void. So I love getting comments and feedback. Please ask your questions. I might have already answered them. That's why they haven't come in. So let's talk about making this tahini lemon cream. I'm just gonna put this on the side for the moment. Okay, where's my tahini? Ah, here it is. So I am lucky. I, I was in Israel um, in December for my nephew's bar mitzvah. So believe it or not, I actually brought tahini back with me. But you, whatever tahini you have in the house is great. The measurements for this go as, of course, it's going to always be to taste. We're going to do a third a cup of tahini. By the way, if you have a family at home, you know, you might want to just go ahead and like triple this recipe and have this tahini lemon cream on hand all the time because it is delicious on steamed vegetables or roasted vegetables. You're actually gonna use it all the time. It's, it's delicious on everything. Um, someone has a question, what is a good way to use barley? Uh, I would a thousand percent put barley right in here. That would be really delicious and I would normally do that. Um, another way to use barley is inside of your soups. That would be wonderful to make a barley soup and I have ways of using barley. My soups in my book, which I will talk to you about later. Okay, so we have this tahini. Next, we're going to be using lemon. So for about that third a cup of tahini, we're gonna be using about two lemons. Um, it's a more lemon than you think. We're gonna get quite lemony. And I am going to be, oh, guess what? This is, this is an orange. It looked like a lemon, it's an orange, hold on. Okay, there we go, I thought it was a Meyer lemon. <laughs> We're just gonna squeeze lemon directly in here. I'm squeezing it into my hands because that is just the way that I catch the seeds. Okay, and yum. More lemon juice. It's always more lemon than you think. Um, for those of you that are low on lemons at home, one way to sort of, not sort of, one way to actually accentuate your lemon flavor is to use the zest. That would best be done with a whole lemon before you've cut it up, but I will just show you anyway. You can use my, one of my favorite kitchen tools, which is a microplane, and you just zest it, and you can use the zest inside your tahini lemon cream or directly inside the grains, and that will just add extra lemon flavor. The acidity, however, will come from the juice. How long does this dressing keep? Um, Jen is asking, uh, like a while. I, I don't know, I mean, I, I would think weeks, a month. I mean, it's gonna last a, lot, a while. How long does tahini, tahini keep in your fridge? A long time, so we're just adding lemon to it and olive oil. This will last, you don't have to worry about that. Um, I'm using a couple of tablespoons of olive oil. So I just, I'm going that this way. And what else am I putting in? Ah, an important ingredient, which is hot water, which is right here in my kettle. So let me just stir this up with a whisk or a spoon. And you'll see, hmm, these, these, these lemons were quite juicy, but can you see this? It's actually becoming thicker with the lemon juice. It's kind of odd, but that's what happens. And that's exactly why we're going to be adding the hot water. Oh, I forgot a really important ingredient. Do you guys know what it is? Can anyone guess? Like what would of course have to go in here? What has to go in everything? Salt. So you're using a nice pinch of salt, like a half a teaspoon of salt. So just to refrain, if you want to measure, we're going with a third cup of tahini, um, about two tablespoons of olive oil, about two lemons, a half a teaspoon of salt, and see how thick that is? That's why we're gonna put in a few tablespoons of water. And now it's gonna become nice and smooth. Oops. 
making a little bit of a mess. That's also my specialty. Can I use lime? Um, if that's what you have in the house, then I'm not going to tell you no. Uh, you got This is a time to use what we have. If you use lime, you're going to have a flavor that is like less, um, you know, Israeli Middle Eastern, and you might be adding a little flavor of like Mexico or Thailand to it. And I think no, why not? It will probably be delicious. In fact, please let me know how that turns out for you. So if you, this is this thickness like this. If you want it more thick, more thin, you can just add more water and that will thin it out. And it just depends on how you like it. I kind of like it like a dressing. Sounds delicious, says Denija Volante. Thank you so much. <laughs> what is she making? Okay, for those of you that are just tuning in right now, I am making a tahini lemon cream with tahini and lemons and olive oil and salt and um, tahini, lemon, olive oil and salt and hot water. And that's gonna go with the yummy, gorgeous grains that I just made that I'm gonna bring back into the picture in a second. So let's just taste how this is. Okay. It's delicious. Let's come back to our yummy, gorgeous grains. And talk about a few other options for it, okay? Right here in front of you, you can see that I have a spring onion. You can tell by the way it's flopping around that I did not buy this yesterday. I bought it a week ago. You guys may have green onions in the house. You may have fresh herbs in the house. You may have, you know, one of these in the house. You go ahead and you can cu cut it up and put it into the grain. So I'll just show you how I cut that up. So look at these green parts, like use them. Maybe the top or a little bit, you know, but uh, let me put this in front so you guys I think can see what I'm doing here is I'm just gonna add some green onion and that can go directly into my yummy, gorgeous grains. And you just put that in there, you could add more, but, and it goes in here and then it will, you know, it'll kind of cook in there. So you won't be eating it fully raw and that will be super delicious. Um, you can also add some part of, you know, the bottom of the spring onion. I'm just being quick because we're on camera, but that's how that works. Okay, now it's time to eat our yummy, gorgeous grains. So I'm gonna serve it to myself in a bowl. I am going to spoon some tahini lemon cream on top. Look at that, so yummy. Now, this is a pantry cooking class, but this of course would be wonderful with roasted vegetables and wonderful with stir fried vegetables. So if you're still having vegetables in the house, like absolutely make yourself a macro bowl. That is, this is like a macro bowl. Um, something else that we can add, which some of you still may have in the house is avocado. And you can at top some avocado on here, which is always makes things yummy. Get a little bit of good omegas on. And another delicious topping that I love, two delicious toppings that I love is I love toasted sesame seeds. So you can add some toasted sesame seeds on top. You know, you can also add more seeds that we talked about. You can add fresh herbs on top. And chalkboard mag people, I would not be surprised if you have nutritional yeast in the house. Always adds yummy, delicious flavor. You can sprinkle a little bit of nutritional yeast. And there we have it. What grains did I use? Somebody is asking. Um, I used quinoa. I used um, lentils and I used pumpkin seeds, but you can use whatever grains that you have in the house. And this is going to be broadcasted on uh, Chalkboard Mag Story, so you can go watch everything again. Let me just taste it to make sure that I'm telling you the truth, that it is gonna be as good as I say. I'm in heaven. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to make this. 
So if you guys need more help in the kitchen during this time or at any time, I want to let you know that I am here for you. You can go ahead and follow me at Ilana Horwich on Instagram. That's E-L-A-N-A-H-O-R-W-I-C-H. You can find recipes of mine online at ilanahorowitch.com. And I also want to let you know that I have written a book called Meal and a Spiel, How to Be a Badass in the Kitchen, which is all about teaching you to become an intuitive cook. It teaches you to make a pasta sauce from anything, a soup from anything, risotto from anything. It's also a really fun read, and there are thousands of people around the country that are using this book as their Bible right now. You know, you would probably be able to make this recipe um, from almost nothing in the house. This is a sweet potato a la rabiata. We're using sweet potato, turning them into noodles, and just using a can of tomato sauce and some spicy red chili flakes and olives if you have them in my chapter called I Can't Believe It's Not Pasta. So there are, I would really love to stay connected with you, and I just want to let you all know, I, I genuinely... Taking a breath, um, I, I send everybody a lot of light and love directly to my, from my heart to you, for your families, um, and for, for humanity and the, the planet at large. Lots of love to you. I hope to stay connected.